Well, thank you very much, and hello, Duluth. Hello, Duluth. And a very special hello to Georgia. And I'm hearing our numbers are very, very good. There's a rumor. There's a rumor out there. We're doing well. Thank you very much. And I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are. And I'd like to begin by asking a very simple question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? That was very unanimous, wasn't it? Yeah. The answer is no. By any standard, the answer is no. And I'm here today with a message of hope for all Americans. With your vote in this election, I will end inflation. I will stop the invasion of criminals into our country. And I will bring back the American dream. I'm going to bring it back very quickly. Our country is being destroyed and tripled by Kamala Harris. A person that got no votes, no votes. Therefore, she's a threat to democracy. But together, we're going to fix our nation, and we're going to fix our nation fast. With your support on November 5th, America will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, and stronger than ever before. This election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of incompetence, failure, and disaster, or whether we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. After all the catastrophes she has caused, Kamala Harris can't say one thing that you do differently. You saw that? What would you do differently? I can't think of anything. This is the worst president in the history of our country and the worst vice president in the history of our country. And wrong track just came out. 89% wrong track. I want to know who are the 11%? Who are they? Where are they? I'm asking you to be excited about the future of our country again. This will be America's new golden age. And remember, every problem facing us can be solved, but now the fate of our nation is in your hands. And Georgia, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris, that Kamala, you've done a horrible job. You're the worst ever. There's never been anybody like you. You can't put two sentences together. The world is laughing at us because of you and Crooked Joe. Kamala, you're fired. Get out. Get out. Get out. You're fired. Two days ago, I was in Western North Carolina, where I witnessed the terrible devastation of Hurricane Helene. And I was here in Georgia with your governor a few weeks ago. He's doing a good job, by the way. Very good job. Thank you. To every family who has lost a loved one or a home in that terrible storm, our hearts are with you, and we are praying for you. The polls. Despite everything, the polls, do you see what's happening here? Here, Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Georgia, the polls. The polls are through the roof, but what's better than that? The early voting is people have never seen anything like it. They've never seen anything like it, because the American people are fed up with the people that are leading us down a, down a road to disaster. So the polls are open for 
Early voting in Georgia every day from now till November 1st. You got to get out there and vote. But most importantly, just vote whichever way you want to do it. I've been one that says whichever way, just get out and vote. Be a little careful. Make sure your vote gets counted. There are ways of doing that, too. With your help, 13 days from now, we're going to win Georgia. We're going to defeat Kamala Harris. And we are going to make America great again. Thank you. What a nice crowd this is. <laughs> what a nice crowd. If Kamala gets four more years, she will obliterate our economy, kill millions of jobs, and destroy your family finances forever. They're destroying our country. They're destroying our country. It's not even possible that they can be doing what they're doing to our country. They're either really bad people, they don't have a clue, maybe they're stupid people. But you know what, I'll tell you, or maybe they just want to get extra voters. Nobody really knows the answer, but just from a common sense, you know, we are the party of common sense, and from a common sense standpoint, how can they be doing what they're doing? Kamala's inflation nightmare has already cost the typical family over $30,000 in higher prices. And now she wants to raise typical family taxes by nearly $3,000 a year. She has no idea. Did you see her today? She was asked kindergarten-type questions by MSDNC. She was unable to answer them. But the best is 60 Minutes. They changed her answer. Should I sue them? Should I sue? Should we sue 60 Minutes and CBN? Now, think of it. They asked her a question on 60 Minutes, which is news. You know, these companies have to get licensed. And in the licensing, it says they have licensing, says they have to be, they have to be honest. They gave her a question. She gave a, an answer that was from a loony bin. They said, we can't have that. They took the answer out in its entirety, threw it away, and they put another answer in. And I think it's the biggest scandal in broadcasting history. That's what I think. It's election interference fraud. The tax queen because that's what she was called. She loved taxes. This is the only person I've ever seen. She campaigns on, we will raise your taxes. All my life, I've watched politics, and everyone said, we will cut your taxes, cut you. She says she's going to raise your taxes. The tax queen is also demanding a shocking 33% tax hike on all domestic production, along with the largest capital gains tax on unrealized gains. Unrealized. In the history of our country, it's really a confiscation of your property. It will crash the stock market and decimate your 401ks, but we'll have a 1929-type depression. This woman is crazy. Take a look at this. policies which could cripple the economy, but the first thing she wants to do is allow these Trump tax cuts to expire. Even the New York Times admits that 85% of the middle class got a tax cut. Americans will face a hike. The Tax Foundation finding that a couple with two kids making $165,000 a year would have to pay over $2,400 more in taxes. And on day one, I will repeal that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to work to get rid of that tax cut. Joe and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to get rid of that tax cut. Everything from a 70 to 80% tax rate. I think that's fantastic. We've got to increase the corporate tax rate. Part of that is going to be about repealing that tax bill that they just passed. 
And also looking at estate taxes are going to have to go up. We will tax capital gains. But we're going to have to raise corporate taxes. Taxing unrealized gains just doesn't seem fair in any sense of the word. When the value of your home goes up, you pay higher higher taxes even if you don't sell your home. Your value of your home never moves the way the the stock moves to say, we're going to tax what you don't have. That's a sore point, and it's a big deal. Is that something you think she firmly believes in? I think it's part of the proposals of the campaign. Under my plan, there will also be a a carbon fee. There has to be some connection between um, the fee and bad behaviors, and there has to be, and and that we have to monitor whether it's going to be passed on to consumers. But I'm going to tell you that should never be the reason not to to, to actually put a fee, and in particular, a carbon fee. Kamala Harris is also pushing the largest small business tax hike in history. Your businesses are just going to go to other countries. That's all that's going to happen. We brought it down to the lowest level we've ever had. And they're going to just drive everybody out. That means the jobs are going to be included. And she wants to massively increase the death tax or the inheritance tax, as it's known in some quarters, which we eliminated in the Trump tax cuts. You know, we eliminated the inheritance tax on small businesses and family farms. And such a big thing. You know, a a farmer has a little beautiful farm. The kids grow up in the farm. They're getting a little older. They sign their will. If they love their kids, not everybody does. But if they love their kids, listen to this. But if they don't, don't worry. Just go to sleep for about 30 seconds. So what happens is, They leave it, and they. what happened before me is they would lose their farms because the tax would be very substantial, like 52 percent, and they couldn't pay, so they'd go to the bank, the friendly banker, they'd borrow the money, they'd put it against the farm. Within two years, the farm was gone, and everybody was crying, and it was a disaster. I got rid of it. I got rid of it. There's no more estate tax. There's no more estate tax on your beautiful family farm, and there's no or small business, and that's a big deal, and they want to end that. They don't want that. They don't like that. They want you to pay a nice big tax and destroy your lives. We're joined tonight by Michael Bellaman, president of the Associated Builders and Contractors, represent over 23,000 small businesses and construction companies. And as a builder, I am very honored to receive their endorsement. They gave me a unanimous endorsement today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great honor. And we were also endorsed by, unanimously, the Border Patrol, unanimously. And I say modestly, they said he's the greatest president we've ever had and the strongest on the border. They said it's not possible to be stronger. We had it down to the lowest level in history. Oh, by the way, should we drop my favorite chart in the entire world? I love it. Come, drop that chart, please. Drop it. Let's see, we're going to... Oh. There it is. I was looking at me. I started looking at me, and I'm looking. I do not like to wear... I don't like my hair tonight. I started looking at me, but I'd rather look at the chart. The chart... I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that chart, right? Wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here, but... If you notice the arrow on the bottom, I take it to bed every night and I kiss it. Roll it up and just kiss it. See the arrow on the bottom? That is the day I left office. Look what happened after that. What they've done to our country is unbelievable. And that includes human trafficking, which is mostly in women. Do you know they lost 325,000 children in the last three and a half years? Think of that. That's your biggest stadium, filled up many, many times, 325,000. They're either dead, they're sex slaves, or they're slaves, but they're missing. Probably most of them never to be seen again. This is under their open border 
horrible, horrible policy. And nobody talks about it. The fake news. Look at all of them back there. They're, look at all of them. That's a lot. That's a lot of fake news. The fake news won't talk about it. I've never seen you don't. 325,000 children gone. They're gone. And the fake news doesn't write stories about it. They don't talk about it. And even when I put up, like, we're going to see a couple of videos tonight, they never put the camera on the video. A friend of mine calls me, oh, I love watching you on television, but when you put up videos, and they're important videos, and instructive, and they teach you what the hell's going on, the camera can't move their damn little camera like this and like that. <laughs> they're just like a piece of steel. And we say, move your camera. They won't do it because the executives back in New York and in California say, don't move that camera. You know, the camera operator does want to move it, but wants to keep his job. Can you believe it? They won't move the camera, so you won't see it home. I'm sorry to tell you. You won't see it. You won't see it. It's horrible. So when you look at that, that was the best we had had, and it was going better. We had it done. The border was the most secure it ever was. And uh, then they came in. They got rid of Remain in Mexico. That's pretty good, right? Remain in Mexico. It wasn't easy, either. It was Remain in Mexico. When I said to the president of Mexico, he's a good guy. He's a, so a socialist, but that's okay. These are minor details. But I said, listen, president, we want everybody to remain in Mexico before they come in. We want to check them out before they come in, Mr. President. He laughed at me. He said, oh, that's so funny, Donald. Why would, why would we ever do that? I said, you're going to do it 100 percent? You're going to do it 100 percent? No, 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 we cannot do that. We're not going to. Why would we do a thing like that? That would be hundreds of thousands of people, that's right, on your side of the border, not on ours. He said, we will not do that. We will not do that. I said, listen, I don't want to embarrass you, so send me over your representative. And a man came over to the White House two days later wearing the most beautiful suit I think I've ever seen. And I wanted to ask him, who is your tailor? But I didn't think that would be an appropriate way to start the negotiation. <laughs> most gorgeous-looking This guy was a handsome guy. That suit was, like, perfect. But I think — I thought I wouldn't do that. And I said, uh, we want a couple of things. But we want you to, number one, provide us thousands of soldiers free of charge because you're letting people pour into our country. They said, we won't do that. I said, yes, you will, 100 percent. He said, we won't. I said, yes, you will. He said, no way. I said, way. <laughs> way. And I said, you're going to do it. And the woman from the State Department, very good woman, but a terrible negotiator. She was 25 years. All she did was Mexico. And I said, we want this, so we want that. We want all these different things, 10 different things. The medical stay. We wanted everything. And she said, sir, I've been after that for 25 years. I said, well, maybe you and I are different. I will guarantee you I will have it by the end of this meeting. So I told him, you're going to give us all of these different things, and you're going to keep the people there, and we're going to let the people in if we want to, because we want to have people come in, but we want them to come in legally, right? And he said, sir, we won't do that. We will not do that, and we're not going to do Remain in Mexico. I said, here's the story. It's Friday. By Monday morning at 7 o'clock, if you don't approve this, and that means over the next five minutes, we are going to charge you tariffs of 25 percent, 50 percent, 75. They're never going to stop. He said, sir, you can't do that. That's not fair, sir. I said, no, it's not fair that you're sending people through your country and into our country and destroying our country. It's not fair. That's what's not fair. So this goes into effect at 7 o'clock on Monday morning. Have a nice weekend. He comes back. May I see you in five minutes? May I make a call to Mexico? I said, are you going to call the president? Yes, I am. He comes back in two minutes. Sir, it would be our honor to supply you with soldiers. It would be our great honor to supply you with as many soldiers, free of charge, of course, sir. As many as you have no idea what I did in the White House. I stopped wars with France. France, you know the France story? They were going to charge us. Think of this. 
25 percent to all Amer — I have to protect American companies, whether we like them or not. Some of them I didn't even like. You know, Google is treating us much better. Do you notice that? What happened to Google? They're treating us much better. Very nice. I appreciate that very much. They say McDonald's was one of the most viewed things that they've ever had. Could you believe McDonald's? That was a hell of a one, right? But France, Emmanuel Macron, good man, nice guy, but he likes — he's a wise guy, though. And he likes France, and I like the USA. So I heard about it. I gave it to our people. I said, tell them we're not paying this massive 25 percent tax. Our companies, we have to protect our companies. And uh, I gave it to Mnuchin. I gave it to everybody. I said, you call them and tell them. They came back, sir. They won't do it. Then they came back again, and they won't do it. I said, you got one more chance. Come back. They came back, sir. They won't do it. And I called up Emmanuel. I said, get me Emmanuel. Macron. I said, Emmanuel, here's the story. You're charging our companies very unfairly a 25 percent tax. Is that right? Oh, yes, Donald. Uh, this was uh, approved by our parliament or whatever the hell they have over there. Did I approve? <laughs> what? Uh, there's 47 different names for that stuff. Yes, Donald, this was fully approved, and uh, there's nothing much I can do about it. Here's, Emmanuel, here's the story. If you don't take that tax off, by the end of business hours today, I'm charging you a 100 percent tariff on every bottle of wine and champagne that comes in to the USA. And he said, Donald, Donald, that is not fair. I said, no, it's not fair that you're charging our companies this massive tax because they happen to be American companies. I said, we're not a stupid country anymore, Emmanuel. He's used to — he's used to dealing with stupid people over here, because we have — we've had some beauties, the deals that we allow. And he said, it's not fair. I said, you got three minutes, Emmanuel. Tell me what to do. May I call you back? Yes. He calls me back. Donald, we have decided to remove the tax from American companies. I did that. I could stand up here. Nobody writes about this stuff. And I wish I put it on tape, but every time I think — I say, oh, I'd love these conversations. I could tell you with Italy what I did. I could tell you. Here's the problem. Every time I think about putting — I want to tape every conversation. The problem is, then I start thinking about Richard Nixon did that. And I say, you know, <laughs> let's do without the tape. We'll do without the tape. No, every time I want — I said, did we record that? No, sir, we did not. I wish, because some of them were classics. You could really hear something. But no, we don't want to do that. Richard Nixon, that was not good. <laughs> when they found out he taped every single conversation. But under Kamala, the construction industry will be decimated. You have to vote Trump, and we will rebuild America. We're going to rebuild America. We're going to do it quickly, too. And we already gave you the biggest tax cut in history. We gave you the biggest regulation cuts by far, by five times in the history of our country. And, you know, I went to the big business guys. They come in and they kiss my ass. It's unbelievable, these guys. You know, before I was president, uh, Trump is on the phone. Uh, tell him I'll call him back sometime. Once I became president, oh, sir, I guess. Such a pleasure to speak to you, sir. It's such a great honor. Oh, I see him. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But we got you the biggest tax cuts in history, biggest regulation. And I said to some of the biggest guys running the big companies, good guys, some good guys, some bad guys, some are really stupid as hell, some are good. But I said, let me ask you, you had, I gave you the biggest tax cut in history, along with everybody. And it created jobs, all that. And I gave you the biggest regulation cuts in history. Which is better? Every single one of them said the regulation cuts were more important. People couldn't do anything. They couldn't build anything. They couldn't build plants. They couldn't build. I approved one in Louisiana. 14 years, it was under they, — they know exactly which one — big LNG monster. $14 billion to $14 billion it was going to cost. I think Japan and other countries were putting up the money. After 14 years, they gave up 
And I called my people together, and I said, we can't lose that. It's so good, number one. Number two, the jobs. Number three, I mean, it's just important that we, it's vital that we have it. I got it done in one day. It was done. Congratulations. They use a lot of times the environment to try and stop projects. Not a lot of times, let's say every time. But we have to be very careful with that, because we're all environmentalists. But we have to be very careful. You destroy our country. I will pass historic tax cuts for our workers and small businesses. And we will have, very important, no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors. And we're also going to do something else. And this just came, and I announced it in Detroit, because Detroit has been decimated. It's been decimated by stupid politicians. And uh, we uh, it just came to me. I was called by some of the smartest guys on Wall Street. They said, how did you ever think of it? I used the paper clip. You know the paper clip? Very simple. They take a little piece of wire. They go like this. I think I became rich. And once everybody saw it, comes in a little box. 129 years ago, probably the same little box. And everybody said, why the hell didn't I think of that? Well, this is the same thing. Tax deduction on interest payments on a car. How about that? How about that? Nobody ever thought of it. And then I came up with a little wrinkle. But only if the car is built in the USA. Is that a good idea? Right? And then I'm going to be working with Elon Musk, who endorsed us very powerfully. He's great. All I know is I watched that rocket come down. I never saw that. I thought I was watching a movie or something, a space age movie. I watched that rocket. I was on the phone with a very important person that everybody in this room will know. I, I got to be careful with using his name. I like to be nice and careful. You know that. Uh, and then I decide, am I better off being careful or really entertaining people? <laughs> and I usually decide on the side of entertainment, and then I have problems. <laughs> and I have problems. Now, I'm talking to this very powerful big guy. We're talking, pop, 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 pop. And I have the screen on the television, and it's muted. Can't hear the sound. And I'm going, I'm seeing this rocket 20 stories tall, something like that, massive. And it used to be white, beautiful, polished white, and now it's all brown from that, uh, like, a million degree temperature coming down, pouring down at 20,000 miles an hour. And it's pouring, and I see that thing is steaming and crazy, and the fire's all over the place, and I'm looking. And then I see the gantry, the big gantry. And I see the thing coming in and slowing down a little bit, but it's still going fast. And I tell this very important guy, listen, uh, would you do me a favor? Hold it for a minute. This is, I'm seeing, just hold it. Hold it. When you're leading in the polls and you, when you already were president, you can say that to important people. Just hold. <laughs> so I, I take the phone, I put it down. The sad part is I never picked it up, I forgot. <laughs> They'll say, he's cognitively imbalanced. He didn't pick up. These people, are they the worst? So I take the phone, I put it down, I say, just, just a second, I, I'm watching something that I don't believe. And I see that fire pouring on the bottom of the rocket, and it's coming in sideways. I said, it's going to crash into the gantry. And then the fire goes on the left side and pushes it over, and it lands. And then those two big, beautiful arms, they grab it. I said, what the hell was that? <laughs> Nobody's ever seen anything like that. So I forgot about my other call, and I called immediately Elon. I said, Elon, was that you? He picks up his cell. I said, was that you, Elon? Yes. I said, can anybody else do it? No. Can Russia do it? Can China do it? Can the USA do it outside of you? No, nobody else can do it. 
I said, what do you call those arms? He said, think of them as chopsticks. I said, that's the way you, they're like chopsticks. They just grab it and they just put that thing down so beautifully. I said, that's great. So he's great. He gave me the most beautiful, you know where he is now? He's working in Pennsylvania, trying to get us lots of votes because he thinks it's so important. He's campaigning. Because he said, this is the most important election in our lifetime. And if Trump doesn't win the election, our country is potentially ruined. I mean, he's as strong as anybody I've ever seen. And we have to say, this is a seriously smart guy, right? You know, he helped us so much with the hurricanes because North Carolina had no communication whatsoever. And I was there early, and I met one of the people that are in charge. And they said, all our wires are down, and people are dying. A tremendous amount of people missing and dying, and the horrible thing. What, what a horrible hurricane that was. It was a water hurricane, more water than we've ever experienced from one storm. And it created rivers out of valleys. I mean, rivers that were 25 feet high and running down like rapids. It's, it destroyed just about everything. And they had no communication. And the gentleman said to me, is there anything you can do? Do you know a man named Elon Musk? I said, I happen to know him. What's the problem? Could he get us Starlink? We're trying to get it. Nobody can get through Starlink. You couldn't get it because it's very successful. So I called Elon. I said, Elon, uh, whatever the hell Starlink is, can you do me a favor? <laughs> can you get it to North Carolina? They need it so badly. And then we talked just for a couple of minutes, and the guy wires me, thank you very much for getting Starlink. I'm still on the phone with Elon. <laughs> he said, sir, thank you very much for the Starlink. They said, it's coming right away. I said, Elon, we didn't even hang up. How the hell did you do that? He said, that's my secret. <laughs> He's really a great guy. And he gives up a lot. He gives up a lot. No, he's given up. I mean, it's amazing that he does it. You know, people don't have to. He just feels so strongly that we're not going to have a country left with these people. Because she's really, seriously, this is not a smart person. And it's not a person that understands. And you can't even say, well, let's go to the vice president, because he is really a sicko, right? <laughs> Remember he called J.D. Vance and I weird? We're not weird. We're very solid people. He's a weird dude, that guy. He's, <laughs> he's always pumping his heart. Ha, ha, ha. You know, like he's got great heart. He's a sick guy. You got both of them. I don't know who the hell is worse. Well, she did one thing that's very smart in the world of politics. She got herself the worst person possible to be vice president. You understand that? Worst. So bad that they'd probably leave her. I don't know. And by the way, how good is J.D. Vance? How good is she? Right? We drafted the athlete. We drafted the athlete. You look at his academic credentials and all of the different things. We drafted a great athlete. He's doing great. He's a great guy, too. So working with Elon Musk, I will cut a record number of job-killing, unnecessary regulations, which will blow your mind when you see how many. And on day one of the Trump administration, I will terminate Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate, and we will end the Green News scam once and for all. Once and for all. And we will quickly again — we were never energy independent until I came along. We were energy independent. We went from number four to number one in a couple of years. We have more liquid gold under our feet than Russia or Saudi Arabia. I got Anwar approved. It's as big, potentially, as Saudi Arabia. In the first week in office, Crooked Joe Biden probably made a deal. Crooked Joe Biden terminated the approval. Ronald Reagan wanted it. He couldn't get it done. Everybody wanted it. I got it done. It was all set. They were all set to start drilling. One of the biggest finds anywhere in the world, as big, they think, as Saudi Arabia. 
And in the first week, they terminate it. We will have that unterminated so fast. Alaska. But we will quickly become energy dependent again. We weren't energy independent before that. To anybody's recollection, we weren't energy independent before that for maybe a hundred years. They don't know if at any time, but we were, and we will quickly become energy independent, and we will frack, 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 and drill, baby, drill. We're gonna drill, baby, drill, and frack, frack, frack. Now, she's not gonna frack. Her whole life, she's talking about, there will be no fracking. There will be no fracking. And I will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months, 50%, half, 5 -0. Starting in January, we will give our companies the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs, the lowest regulatory burdens, and free access to the single best and biggest market on the planet. But it won't be that way for long. If we have stupid people like this running our country, you're not going to have the big market anymore. It can go very fast. Look at Venezuela. 15 years ago, it was an unbelievable country. Now it's a disaster. They can't get water, they can't get food. But what did Biden do? He starts buying oil from them, do you believe it? And we have so much, so he's putting them back to health. Such a great move to do. They were ready to give up. We could have let the people go back into Venezuela. This guy, I, I tell you, the worst. Jimmy Carter is the happiest man because his administration is brilliant compared to these two losers. Jimmy Carter is a happy man. You saw him the other day voting. I think he voted for me. <laughs> but only if they make their products here. This is it. Got to make their products. Everything is based on you got to make your products in America. No more making them in China, making them all over the place. And you got to hire American workers for the job. And if these companies don't make their products here, then they will pay a very stiff tariff when they send their products into the United States, where they're made by somebody else or some other country. For the privilege of competing with our workers and our cherished, but now very protected companies. We're going to protect these companies. We're going to have a lot of companies moving. You watch Detroit. Detroit. You know, for 40 years ago, I've been hearing about Detroit's coming back. Never came back. It'll come back so fast with a series of brilliant incentives that won't cost us anything. But most importantly, tariffs and taxes. Everybody's going to be moving back into the country because they're not going to want to pay. And one quick story, just a quick, should I say it or should I just get the hell out of here? One quick story. I thought you were going to say that. One quick story. So, about a year and a half ago, the largest builder of auto plants, who I know, John, I said, uh, I want to see one of your factories that you're building. He's the biggest. And he said, okay. I said, where would we go? Mexico. I said, I don't want to go to Mexico. What the hell do I want to go? I want to see one here. Well, we don't build them big here. He builds them all over the world. He doesn't care. He builds them wherever the hell they pay him. And that's, by the way, with companies, that's why they move out of our country in two minutes if they're not going to be given the right deal. So I said, no, I don't want to go to Mexico. I said, well, the big ones are built in Mexico. I'm sorry. I said, how big is it? The biggest in the world. They're going to build cars. Think of this. Thousands, millions of cars. They're going to sell them into the United States, destroy Michigan. If Michigan doesn't vote for me, I tell you, I am, I'm going to make Michigan richer than anybody. I think even richer than you, I hate to say it. Michigan, I'm gonna, they're gonna, we're going to bring back the whole car business, but you could get plants also, okay? Because I don't care. As long as they're in the United States, I, can't, I couldn't care less. So, so I said, how big would that be? He said, they'll make more cars than all of the state, the entire state, much more than Detroit. These are big monsters. You press a button and it starts. It's unbelievable. And the biggest in the world, I said, boy, I don't like that. That's going to kill them. So I started talking about it, and this plant that's being built, and everyone said, oh, it's not real. Well, it is, and then it was going to start. And then last week, I spoke in front of the Economic Club of Detroit, and I spoke about cars, and I talked about this plant. And in the audience, just like right where you're sitting, sir, good-looking guy, stand up, please. Right you, that's right. 
Yeah, stand up. Right in your seat. That's where he sat. Right there. I looked in the audience, and who do I see? I see John. And I said, oh, I pass a message to him while I'm speaking, because this was more interesting to me than anything I was doing up there. And I said, I want to see you after so I see him afterwards. I said, John, tell me something. How is that monster plant? And it's actually more than one, but this one monster, how's it doing? Sir, uh, they've abandoned that plant. What? That's great news, you know, because it's going to kill us. What do you mean they've abandoned? They think you're going to be elected president. You're going to put tariffs on their cars, and they won't be able to make any money. They're going to lose their shirt. They've abandoned the plant. I said, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Marjorie, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. So Michigan can now keep their car companies going. But in all fairness, those are old plants and stuff. Generally, we're going to give them the greatest new plants. We're going to give them plants that are going to be unbelievable. We're going to put the auto workers. You know, the auto workers want Trump. The Teamsters want Trump. Did you see the Teamsters? The rank and file of the Teamsters voted 62% for Trump. Never had no thing like that ever happened before. The firemen nationwide voted for Trump. The firemen never happened before. Never happened before. But I will never apologize for defending America. I'm not going to do it. I will protect our workers. I will protect our jobs. I will protect our borders. I will protect our families. And I will protect the birthright of our children to live in the richest and most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And that's what we're going to have. Under Kamala, you know, this crazy Kamala thing is just crazy. First of all, you can't call her Harris because nobody knows who the hell you're talking about. If I say uh, to the legendary Marjorie Taylor Greene, Harris, I say, what do you think of the job Harris is doing? She'll say, who the hell is Harris? Nobody knows. No, it's the truth. Nobody knows who the hell Harris is. It's the weirdest thing, isn't it? So you have to say Kamala. Under Kamala and her economy, millions of Americans, she has no idea about an economy. She's not a smart person. She's a low IQ individual. She is. She is. She's a low IQ person. Millions of Americans are suffering because of inflation. They're losing their jobs. They can't afford housing, groceries, or a car. And yet Kamala is importing millions of illegals across our borders and giving them taxpayer benefits at your expense. And putting them into luxury hotels in New York and Chicago and Los Angeles while our veterans are sleeping outside of that hotel on the street. So you are witnessing the economic oppression of Americans to reward and enrich illegal aliens. But all of that stops two weeks from now. It stops. For four straight years, Kamala Harris has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from prison.